ان الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ارسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد ان اقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى ان يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى ان يكن خيرا منهن ولا تلمزوا انفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالالقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الايمان ومن لم يتب فاولئك هم الظالمون اللهم اجعلنا من التائبين ولا تجعلنا من الظالمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had many companions and many of them are very famous and some of them not so famous a young man by the name of Thabit ibn Qais who actually had a hearing disorder he could only hear from one side of his ear he used to insist that he sits right next to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so his good ear is on the side of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he can hear him as a matter of fact rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make extra accommodations for him to sit right next to him and before i even tell you the subject of my khutbah that's actually a very interesting indication of how rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would put in the first row people that have any kind of handicap and you usually we think of people that have a handicap you put them in some other side space or some other place some special accommodation this person is sitting next to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in any case the story is actually some, uh, somewhat interesting he was late one time he was late to come to the the, the khutbah that the messenger was giving alayhi salatu wasallam so he kept pushing people to come to the front and when he's coming to the front he sees this one sahabi who doesn't know is basically a no name companion not famous guy so he tells him move rudely now this the person who has the handicap is now being rude he's saying move and so the sahabi refuses to move and he says to him why don't you move who are you who do you think you are manant ibn man so he said qul ismi fulan this is my name and it's interesting that when he mentioned his name you know you'd mention your name in arabic you mention who you're the son of that's how you're identified so he mentioned ana fulan ibn fulan i'm the so and so's son he goes oh that one Ibn Fulana? Oh, your mom is this woman, right? Now these people, their parents are not Muslim. Right? Because they just became Muslim, so their parents are non-Muslims. And if they're non-Muslims, they have history. They have different kinds of lives. So this, his, this guy's mother, this Sahabi's mother, she used to have a reputation in, the, in some shady circles. And the guy, the, the one who was moving him, remembered that, that she's married to that man. So he mentioned her father, his father. He said, oh, I know your father, but I also know your mother. And he said it like that. And was, this is the idea. The idea was to humiliate him, to embarrass him, to remind him of what his mother used to be like. And this is happening in the front row as the Rasul Sallallahu is sitting there. So Rasul Sallallahu stops the khutbah. And he points to that man. And he says, Mada ra'it? Look around you, what do you see? He asks the sahabi who insulted the other sahabi, what do you see? And he says, رَأَيْتُ الْأَسْوَادُ وَالْأَبْيَاضُ وَالْأَحْمَارُ I see black, I see white, I see red. In other words, I see all these different people of different ethnicities, different colors, different races. I see all of them. And then Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, أَفْضَلُكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The best of you with Allah are the people that have the most taqwa. In other words, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam crushed this idea of being able to make fun of someone. I'm not saying anything, bro. I'm just saying, that's your mom, right? He was just going to do that much. But Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stopped him in his tracks. Put it to an end. There's ways to insult people. Sometimes you can insult someone very directly. You can curse them out. 
sometimes it's indirect. Sometimes you don't even have to use words to insult someone. And as a matter of fact, the most common way of demeaning someone, putting someone down, is not even to use words, to make a face. You can, make a certain, you can look at people a certain way, and they can know that you're not welcome. Or they think of you as inferior. You know? So now, our deen, of course, it tells us what to say and what not to say. But that's not enough. That's just not enough. Because sometimes people can actually use good words and still insult you. There's a way to call someone brother. And then we say, move, brother. <laughs> brother. You could say the word brother in a kind way, and you could say the same word brother in a demeaning, condescending way. Just because you're using the right word, doesn't mean you have the right attitude. You guys know, those of you that are parents know that all too well. When your children say salam to you, there's different ways of saying salam. There's a way that shows respect, and there's, Wa'alaikum salam. What did you say? Is it Wa'alaikum salam. You did say it, but that's not how you say salam. You, after Jumu'ah is done, you're trying to get to your shoes. You're just trying to good, push people out the way so you can get to your shoes because you know you have an emergency meeting. People's lives are depending on you, so your shoes are very important. So you're pushing people around, and this brother that you push kindly says to you, Salaamu Alaikum. Say, Alaikum Salaam. You, now you said something nice, may peace be upon you, but there's no peace on your face. There's no peace in the elbow you just threw at him. But you're saying something that you don't mean at all. Now in light of that, these are a few incidents that are mentioned in tafsir under the ayah that I shared with you. Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawm. Those of you who have iman, don't let any group, any group among you, make fun of any other group among you. Not any group can make fun of any other group. Now let's backtrack a little bit before we go further. We need to take a few steps back. This is Surah Al-Hujurat. And Surah Al-Hujurat begins with showing the utmost respect to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَا تَرْفَعُوا أَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ صَوْتِ النَّبِيِّ وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ أَن تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Don't you raise your voice above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't you call him like you call just anybody else. All your good deeds might be taken away just because you raised your voice and you called him inappropriately. We are being taught the etiquette of dealing with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ You had better know in your company, the Sahaba are being told, the companions are being told, in your company, there's the Messenger of Allah. Watch it. It's not just anybody sitting with you. This is the Messenger of Allah sitting with you sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to show respect. So first we are taught respect for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then as the, the, the surah continues, one of the things we're told is, in the same ayah, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ He says the same ayah, وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah made iman beautiful in your hearts. Allah, Allah made iman beloved to you and He beautified it in your hearts. Now what does that mean? That means the love we have for Rasulullah wasallam is something beautiful we carry inside our hearts. But when you have something beautiful inside your heart, then it goes out. Al-ina'u bima fihi yandah. A container gives out what it contains. So what happens when somebody has the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in their hearts? One of the things that happens then is anybody else who has in their heart Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my heart becomes soft towards them too. And the only reason for that is I love the Messenger so much alayhi salatu wasalam that anybody else who has love for Allah's Messenger, I have love for them. That actually becomes an, it becomes an indication of my love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So when a Muslim doesn't think twice about making fun of another Muslim, then there is something missing in his love for Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. After all, the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam would love all of them the same. You know, to help you understand this easier, to give you a different example, there are people who have lost a parent. And when you lose a parent, it's a very traumatic thing. And you want to, you miss your dad, and you want to remember, you want to honor his memory, you know what you do? You go visit some of his friends. And visiting his friends and showing them respect is the closest thing you have now to the memory of your father. My dad used to love these people, so I love them. Being around these people reminds me of the one I love that I no longer see. That is actually the relationship you and I have with each other. We are actually remem reminiscing, remembering the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa who is no longer in our midst. 
It's no longer among us. All we have is the memory of him that is carried in each of our hearts. That's what it is. So from that point of view, لا يسخر قوم من قوم. No one group should be making fun of another group. Let's understand sukhriya a little bit. Sukhriya in Arabic actually means to make fun, but istihza also means to make fun. Tashkheer in Arabic is to put something down or put someone down. When you think of someone as less than you, dumber than you, uh, uh, an inferior race than yourself, a poorer class than yourself, not as worthy as you, not as qualified as you, not as good as you, not as smart as you, not as healthy as you, not as strong as you. When you think of someone as less in any way, and then you say something about them, whether you're making fun of them or not, but your comments are inspired by the idea that these people are less than me. Even your comments, that is tashkhir, that is sukhriya, that is sukhriya. When Allah Azza wa Jal gave us this beautiful deen, then He put the red, the black, the white, the, the skin color didn't matter anymore. And the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tell us, just like Allah will say in this surah, inna akramakum Allahi atqakum. The most noble among you are the ones that have the most taqwa. Taqwa of Allah, consciousness of Allah is inside the heart. I cannot see it. So what makes you better than me, or what makes me better than you is invisible. Which means we will never know. We're never gonna know. Then all we can know is we're equal. We stand equal. Somebody has, somebody looks very pious, somebody doesn't look very pious, we have no idea what's going on inside their heart. The guy that looks really religious, may be really corrupt inside, I don't know. And the guy, or he may be really great, I don't know. I have to give benefit of the doubt. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْخَاكُمْ Allah took the appearance of the Muslim away from this conversation. We have to treat people equally. We actually can't even treat people based on their knowledge. Somebody's a scholar, so you think of them as better. And somebody's not a scholar, you think of them as less. No, not in Islam. Not in Islam. Somebody's a scholar, you can respect their knowledge, that's sure. But they deserve as much respect as anybody, any other Muslim, because what they share that really brings them honor is the taqwa of Allah. And the taqwa of Allah, a farmer can have it, who knows nothing about Islam, who knows very, only knows la ilaha illallah, and that's enough for him. And it could be a alim who's been studying 50 years, he has taqwa of Allah. You understand? So it's, what you have inside your heart is what makes you superior to Allah Azza wa Jal. So now, no group should be putting another group down. And then Allah goes further to say, وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِّن نِسَاء No women should be putting other women down with jokes. No women should be passing comments about other women. Allah separated the two. Even though when you say no group should make fun of any other group, it covers everyone, men and women. But He separated it on purpose. Now why separate it? Because apparently the way women make fun of each other is very different from the way men make fun of each other. And each of them can each actually very easily justify that they're not doing anything bad. I can give you lots of examples from my home because I have four daughters. And they make fun of each other in ways that are very creative. I, I, would, I as a guy would never think of it. Oh, you're wearing pink today? That's all she says, you're wearing pink today? And the other one is offended. Mama, she's making fun of me. I didn't say anything, I just said she's wearing pink. Yeah, but the way you said it, and the way you looked at her, and your intonations, and the <laughs> at the end, all of that is part of sukhriya. Oh, you think that matches? Oh, okay. Well, guys don't do that. <laughs> no, I don't think it matches, and that's why I'm wearing it. You know, that's, for guys it's different. But for girls it's different. So Allah separated it. Allah made it a separate issue. And everybody, you know, people use language, that when you come after them, say, no, 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 I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? I was just commenting on the color. I was just commenting, hey, did you get that at Walmart? I was just curious. I wasn't making fun of the fact that you're cheap or you buy cheap. I was just saying, I'm curious, where did you buy the product from? You want to justify it to anybody else? You could. You can't justify it to Allah. You can't. أَأَنْتُمْ أَعْلَمُ أَمِنْ اللَّهِ You're going you're gonna to justify this to Allah. This is why at the end of this surah, he says, أَتُعَلِّمُونَ اللَّهَ بِدِينِكُمْ You're going to teach Allah your deen? You, you know better? You're going to run your mouth like that and then try to get away with it? SubhanAllah. You know, I'm going to give you some examples that are closer to home because this is a problem that should have been solved 1400 years ago. When these ayat came down. We should have been the example, the ummah, the Muslim should have been the example to the world of what it means to treat all human beings equally. 
Ya ayyuhan nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. We're right now talking about Muslims not making fun of other Muslims. But the final conclusion of this surah is all human beings were made from, from a male and a female. And the only reason you're different is so you can get to know one each other better and appreciate your diversity. That's all, that's the only reason. But now, just give you an example closer to home. I come from Pakistan, that's my home country. And there, in many parts of the Muslim world, you can go to a fancy restaurant. Ironically, a fancy restaurant in Lahore is McDonald's. But anyway, so you go to a fancy restaurant. And you're going sitting there, you've got, you dressed up super nice to eat your, you know, whatever sandwich. And you're sitting there, and then some family, some, some cab, taxi driver's family, or some security guard's family, some chokidar's family comes into the restaurant. And they sit right next to you. Now you're dressed all nicely, and your family's dressed all nicely, and you've got your SUV outside, and all this stuff, and these guys came on bicycles, they were in dirty shawar kameezes, and they're sitting next to you, speaking loud, they're really excited to be in this restaurant for the first time, their dad saved up for a few months so he can get, take them on a treat, and the family that's sitting there, the posh family that's sitting there is getting uncomfortable, and they're looking at them like, why are they here? What kind of people do they let in this place? Ugh. Even if they don't say a word, their face is sukhriya. Their face. This is the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa where everybody's treated equally. You can't even look at another Muslim equally. What are you talking about non-Muslims? You can't even look at another Muslim. And this is a fundamental teaching of our deen. Fundamental. All human beings are equal. They're all children of Adam alayhi salam. Something's wrong in your, in your, not only your thinking, your belief, if you can think of someone as inferior. There's something seriously wrong with your iman. Not to mention the lack of love you may have for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا يسخر قوم من قوم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكونوا خير منهم He added, it may be the people you're making fun of are better than you. ولا نساء من نساء Don't let women make fun of other women, they may be better than them. Better than them how? The girl says, what do you mean better? Look at her clothes. Look at the neighborhood she lives in. Look at the car this guy drives. He's better than me? None of that makes you better than anyone. The only thing that makes you better is what's inside, what's invisible. And that's only visible to Allah. So you may be making fun of a friend of Allah. And when someone makes fun of a friend of Allah, they become enemies to Allah. So be careful. Just be careful. You know, I, I, not too long ago, I met a brother. He came up to me, he wanted to take shahada. Uh, you know, he's, he's in the Midwest somewhere in Ohio. And he told me that he's been a, you know, white guy, he's been a bartender for his whole life. And I don't know how he found one of my videos or something on YouTube. And he starts watching a bunch of them. And he went through the entire Juz Amma Tafsir that I've done podcast, which is complicated, but he went through the whole thing. Sitting in the bar, just plugging in the ear, and he's pouring drinks for his friends. Six months, took shahada on his own, no Muslim around him. Actually, he did tell me he has some Muslim friends, regulars at the bar. <laughs> you know, he asked him a few questions about Islam. So he takes shahada and he says, you know, I'm, I'm ready to leave this life. I haven't had a drink. A bartender hasn't had a drink for six months. Hasn't had a drink. When you look at him, you're not going to know this guy has taqwa. But I can guarantee you, that man has more taqwa than most of us. The situation he's in, and the way he holds himself back, and then he finally quit. No savings, no nothing, he quit. I can't do it anymore. I can't go back. Even the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'een were not given the, the, the ayat to quit alcohol right away. They were told the harm and the sin is greater than the benefit. Then they were told at least don't be drunk when you're about to pray. Then years later they were told leave it all together. Allah did not reveal one time, leave alcohol. And this man left alcohol on his own once he heard about Islam. Subhanallah, that's taqwa. <coughs> but when you look at him, you wouldn't know. You had, you'd have no idea. Don't put people down. Don't think of them as less than you. They may be way better than you are. Asa an yakunu khayram minkum. Asa an yakunna khayram minhunna. Then he goes on and he says, "Wala talmizu anfusakum." Please pay attention to this part, folks. The ayah is almost done. Wala talmizu anfusakum. It's all one ayah, which means it's one teaching. It's one piece of wisdom from Allah. He says, لَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ اللُّمَزْ in Arabic, or lums, they say, is actually bil'ayn. The way you look at someone, or you wink at someone, or you raise your eyebrows and go, hmm. No words. No words. Just 
facial expressions. Did you know in the Quran, some of the people that Allah punishes the worst, their crimes are described as their facial expressions? ثُمَّ نَظَرْ ثُمَّ عَبَسَ وَبَصَرْ ثُمَّ أَدْبَرْ وَاسْتَكْبَرْ He just stared. The way you could stare at someone to make them feel stupid. Somebody's trying to tell you something, you're like, what? You know what they're saying, but you want them to make to feel dumb. So you just... Or you're avoiding eye contact like you're not even listening. Somebody says salam to you and you're like... When you do that, that's lumaz. When you make someone feel down, when you put someone down, just with your facial expressions. Not a word. Not a word came out of your mouth. And Allah says, لا تلميزوا أنفسكم It's so remarkable. He didn't say, لا تلميزوا آخرين Don't put down others. He said, don't put down yourselves. Yourselves. When you do that kind of insult, you are actually insulting your own self. You were made so much better than that. You're insulting yourself. And you're inviting others to do that to you. When you treat someone in that way, then you are asking for yourself to be treated that way. This is why in the Qur'an, سَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ When you go to somebody's house, say salam to yourselves. What does that mean, say salam to yourselves? I thought you say salam to someone else. But when you say salam to someone else, you know the reaction is gonna be what? They are going to be saying salam to you. It's gonna be reversed immediately. So he says it's the same as saying salam to yourself, because the reaction is necessary. It's gonna happen. And just like that, when you put down someone, look down at someone, make facial expressions at, some, at someone, you're condescending towards someone, it will come back to you. وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ And he goes on and he says, and don't call each other with nicknames. Don't throw nicknames at each other. Hey, fatty, how's it going? Yo, wide face, or whatever you come up with. No, no, he doesn't mind, bro. He's, we're dogs. We're good. No, he don't mind at all. We're good, right? And the guy will say, yeah, 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 sure, no problem, we're good. But he's not good. A bunch of girls are hanging out together, hey, you're so short. You're so cute. Well, she didn't appreciate that you called her short. Even if you added it's so cute at the end. And even though she may not say anything now, and your friend may not say anything now, there is a day when they're gonna be desperate for good deeds on Judgment Day. And if you have crimes against them, they can take your good deeds. They can take them. They may not collect now, they'll collect on Judgment Day. Watch it. This, this is especially among friends. Don't call each other nicknames. Don't call them nicknames. Even nicknames that are not mean. If they don't like a nickname, don't do it. You know, I had a... This, I travel a lot, and I, was, I went to this one place where a person doesn't have a lot of respect for, I guess, personal space. The guy doesn't know me at all. Actually, doesn't know me at all. Hey, know me, how are you? I was like, excuse me? Oh, Nomi, it's okay, I can call you Nomi, right? I was like, no, you, actually you can't. My mother calls me Norman, so I'd prefer you call me Norman. Uh, if anybody could call me anything they want, it would be my mom and dad, and uh, you can't. I didn't say, no, it's okay, bro. I don't like it. And if I don't like it, I better tell him now, because I'd rather not tell him on Judgment Day. <laughs> fix it now. If somebody's doing that to you, fix it now. If you're doing it to someone, fix it now. وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ And here's the conclusion. بِئْسَ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ How terrible, how terrible is الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوق A corrupt word, the corrupt word. بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ After you have iman. What does الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوق mean? A single word that can be offensive to someone is a horrible thing for anyone who has iman. In other words, filthy language out of your mouth and faith inside your heart cannot coexist. You cannot have iman in your heart which has been beautified, zayyanahu fi qulubikum, and ugly words come out of your mouth. If you have no control over, you know, whatever four letter words you keep using every time you get frustrated, there's a, there's a spiritual problem. It's not just a habit problem, it is a spiritual problem. The other side of that equation from the same ayah is actually how can you use a terrible word for anyone who has iman? Anybody who has iman, you cannot use terrible words for them anymore. You can't use bad for, words for them anymore. Corrupt words are no longer allowed for another Muslim. It's just not allowed. بِئْسَ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ And people who don't want to give it up, people who don't want to repent, and those are the wrongdoers. I wanted to highlight and dedicate this entire khutbah to this one ayah for a simple reason. 
In our minds, there are some things that are really important in Islam. Prayer is important in Islam. You know, charity is important in Islam. We have an idea of what is really, really a big deal in Islam. But you know what, what I'd like to share with you? The things that Allah makes into a big deal into the, in the Qur'an are a big deal in Islam. This is a big deal. There's a lot of time and ayah dedicated to this subject. Which means it's not a small matter to Allah. It is not a small matter to Allah. And the way that it's been, the continuum, this is the, you know, where it's placed is so remarkable. In the beginning of this, you know, was the love of the Messenger wasallam. Then Allah talked about the most terrible thing. What if, what if it happens that Muslims are fighting and killing each other? How should you make peace between them? That was the second subject of the surah. And the third subject of the surah is don't make fun of each other. Why is that the third subject? Because when you make fun of each other, hatred will grow among you. And if it gets out of hand, eventually you'll be killing each other. It's already happening. Why do people kill each other? Why do Muslims kill each other? It starts with them thinking of the other race, the other ethnicity, the other village, the other tribe as inferior, as corrupt, as ignorant, as something else. And eventually you can have policies that are, that are driven by that kind of bias. And those, those policies, when they get enough out of hand, it can re, re, lead to entire conflict between Muslims. That all began with them making fun of each other. So Allah identifies the root of the problem. لا يسخر قوم من قوم. At the, the end of the surah, Allah says something that puts you and me in our, in our place. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ No doubt about it, Allah knows the unseen secrets of the sky and the earth. And Allah has full view of the things that you do. He has a full picture of what you do. Why you say what you say, what you say and how you say it, He has the full picture. So may Allah Azza wa make us merciful in our speech and our attitudes and our gestures towards each other. May Allah give us the courage and the iman to, to seek forgiveness from the people that we've offended. May Allah Azza wa make us a people that have a soft corner for one another only and only driven by the iman we have of Allah and the love we have for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil آياتي وذكر الحكيم الحمد لله وكفاء والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مقوتا